Hello everyone, my name is Tom and I'm working on New Brooklyn Bridge Tycoon. For those who doesn't know what it is, it's a management game where you build your food shops and serve hungry customers. You need to take care of resources so you can produce those in factories or outsource them from the market. Your goal is to monopolize the bridge and be the only one left. You can do that by sabotaging other players or play fairly by adapting to the market and promote your shops better than the others. Let's take a look at what changed during these past few weeks. The most exciting change I did was to finally get rid of this disgusting blue space water. Instead of trying to make the water shader myself, I decided to get an asset pack, paid a bit of money, but I think it's worth it. Because look at this water. It's much better than what I had before. And together with that, I also added these small boats that will swim around. They don't add any purpose to the game, but it's just a visual little thing like the pedestrians to just fill up the world because it looks kinda empty. Of course swapping the water with the new asset wasn't just a plug and play. I had a lot of issues with that. I had to figure out what's wrong with my pipeline and play around with these settings, but at the end I'm liking the result. And I hope you too. Next we will look at the shops. More precisely, we will start with the pizzeria. I updated the interior of it, because this interior was kinda lame. I needed to get rid of the grey box. Instead of that, I placed a proper table. I added a sink. Moved a few things around. Added a pizzeria staff that wave at you. And here's the result. Obviously, this is not the final product, but at least it's not a gray box in the middle of your pizzeria. <laughs> then, as you might have noticed, I changed the shop UI once again. I added this recipe dish. Instead of telling you what's the storage inside of the shop, you can actually see the recipe that you're making and the result, and how much ingredients you need for that, how much you will get, and all of that. And together with that, I also moved and changed the distribution management. Previously there was this thing called distribution order where you click on many things to decide how many ingredients you want to move to which shop. I decided to move that logic to the shop UI itself. So now you can do everything from inside the shop, which I think is a big improvement to the user experience. I also updated the main menu again. I made the buttons a bit bigger by adding some extra padding to them and I added the wishlist call to action to the corner of the screen. Previously, the call to action was when the player would press on exit, there will be the button to prompt the user to wishlist the game. I was told that once the user already clicks on the exit button, they're in the mindset of OK, I want to get out of here. And it's a better idea to have this call to action in a different spot. And you can see that in many demos. They put the call to action to wishlist the game somewhere on the main menu. Obviously not as the main thing, but somewhere in the corner as a side thing for the player to see and be like, hey, I like this demo, let me wishlist that. Or at least that's what I hope will be the result. And of course, bug fixes. I had this bug with the pedestrians that they would glitch around, not spawn properly, disappear as soon as they spawn, like, something was wrong with them. And after a lot of debugging, I understood what was the problem. When the pedestrian reaches their destination, I'm checking for the remaining distance. If it's less than 1.5, remove the pedestrian from the bridge. This was a bit problematic, because as soon as the pedestrian was spawning, their path was not immediately set. It took them a bit of time to figure out the path that they're supposed to take, which resulted in the remaining distance to be zero, which caused this condition check to come in too early into the picture. So I had to add this thing where it first checks if there is a path, and if there is a path, that means the pedestrian started walking, they found their path, they know their destination, and they're ready to go. And at this moment, the remaining distance is set to the proper distance, which is the time that I can start to check for this condition. This was a one-line fix, and it took me a lot of time to get to it, but that's part of game development. Not everything would be 50, 100, thousands of lines of solution. Sometimes it's like, oh, 
I just need to check for yet another condition and that's it. I've been making a lot of progress on the game, but I'm lacking one very important aspect. Player feedback. Last time I got that was about a month ago, so this week I finally made a build that I was happy enough with to share it with some amazing people. Player's feedback is very important when making a game and obviously my game is no exception. I asked Joe from Fox Hollow Games to give me his feedback. His analysis was so good that not only he was able to tell me what's good and bad with my game, but also together with the future features that I'm intending to add to the game, it kind of threw me into some sort of a crisis with my game and I was trying to figure out how I can make it better. I realized that the current gameplay is a bit faulty and it will be very difficult to add those features with the current state, so I decided to change it. It happens with many games, pivoting is something that happens a lot in video games. You start with one idea that you think is good, then you realize that, yeah, it's not that good and you decide to pivot it, maybe to change some certain aspects of the game or change it completely, but this is a crucial step in the game development when you realize that, hey, this is not working, let me try something else. Let me show you the current game loop of the game. You get these raw ingredients, either you produce them yourself using factories or you get them from the market. You send those to the store, for example your pizzeria, you produce the pizzas and you sell them to the customers. When I started thinking about it more in depth, I realized the following issues. For example, what if I want to start selling pizzas with toppings? Do I just require more ingredients? Or do I use the regular pizza as the base for the pizza with toppings? And how will that work? Does that mean that a pizza shop can only sell one product at a time? What if I want to sell a regular pizza and a pizza with toppings? Or different toppings? How do I decide which ingredients go to which of the pizzas? Making a UI for that and asking the user to decide oh, how many pizzas of that or that you want to make and distribute the ingredients inside the shop itself sounded a bit crazy. I decided to change this idea of the shops producing the food. Now the flow is going to be more like this. You will have your base ingredients like cheese, dough, tomato sauce. Those ingredients will be sent to a different place, which I will call them factories. That factory will take the raw ingredients and make the pizza out of it. And then the player can take the pizza and send it to the shop. So now you can ask yourself, okay, so I produced the pizza in yet another factory and not in the shop. Like, what's the point of that? What am I gaining? With this flow, I separate the production and the selling. So the shop is your sell point, and that's it. All it does, it interacts with customers. And then all the production goes to the factories. You kind of separate the two, and that's it. Which means that you are now solving the problem, okay, what if I want to sell pizza and pizza with toppings? You produce those and you send whatever you produce to the shop and the shop just sells whatever it has. This also helps me with future features that I wanted to add events in the game. So for example, there is an event where a customer asks, oh, I need 30 pizzas to be delivered to that place. So now you can produce the pizzas and allocate a certain amount to that event. Whatever rest you produced, you can send to your shop. Also, while figuring out the new core loop, I realized that I've been looking at the, my current shops the wrong way. Right now, in the game, I have a pizza place, a burger place, and a sushi place. And I always consider these three shops as your base level, from which you can only increase in quality. I realize it's kind of wrong, because the pizza, for example, has so many steps to get to it and requires so many ingredients that it shouldn't be your entry-level shop in the game. I've started thinking about introducing a, even simpler shops. For example, a hot dog stand, a lemonade stand, um, and together with that, I also started thinking about the factories themselves. Does the cheese factory only produce cheese? That's kind of a waste, no? Maybe instead of having the cheese factory, I'm gonna have a dairy factory. All your dairy products would be produced in that place, which can be used to produce cheese, for example, for pizzas and whatever requires cheese. And then in the future, I'm thinking about introducing a milkshake stand, so you can produce ice cream for that. There's still a lot to think about and figure out, but I think I'm doing the right decision of switching and separating between production and sell point and yeah we will see how that goes anyway this is the current pivot of the game and i hope that if you're a creator that goes through an identity crisis with your project you'll keep on working on it it's okay to change directions just don't give up please wishlist new brooklyn bridge tycoon on steam it helps with the algorithm thingy and thank you for watching and i will see you next time